I'm Sally, Sally Jenkinson. I am also an associate at the Open Data Institute. And, uh, I've been doing some initial work in terms of research to background the standards. So, um, like I say, we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, sorry, is somebody not on mute? Not. Um, yeah, so basically my point of interest at this point is um, doing some research into the background for the standards. Great, thank you. Uh, Ross? Can't hear you, Ross. We'll come back to you, Russ, but well, perhaps you just need to sort out your mic. Um, Oliver? Hi, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Uh, so I'm Oliver Beetson from uh, I'm in London Sport Partnership, uh, working on Open Session, which is an open active endpoint. Uh, and we're yeah trying to uh, look at yeah sort of how we can serve the best data to the ecosystem. Um, we're interested in the developments uh, in the future of the uh, standard. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mike? Uh, Mike Thacker from Porism Limited. We do a lot of work as technical partners for the local government association for whom we've published quite a few um, data schemas against which a few hundred local authority data sets are published. We're just coming to the end of some work and are publishing first release for wider consultation and a pilot of a schema for local services. Now that we are expecting that to cover sports, but it also cover related things like obesity, um, help services, stopping smoking, and things which are completely unrelated to sports. Um, I think we've emailed your Richard about all the background work we've done. And Sally, you may be interested in some of that because we've reviewed a lot of the landscape as it stands before coming up with quite a detailed data model. And I guess I'm quite like to learn the extent to which sports data fits into that or or sports data is a special case. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Matt? Hello. Can you all hear me yet? I hope you can. I'm Matt from Flexi. Um, same company as Tom. So as he said, we're looking at, you know, aggregating as much data as possible. We've got about 150 partners at the moment. Um, some of which you know we're integrating with the major studio booking systems, some of which we're actually digitizing ourselves. And um, yeah, obviously a lot of things, there's a lot of people in this group and elsewhere who have had to do the same tedious process of collecting all this data and everyone's got their own unique form. Absolutely better to, better, you know, to work out how we can do this better in the future. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Um Joel. Hey, can you hear me? Uh, so uh, I'm Joel. I'm a software writer at Bookwen. Uh, Bookwen is an application that helps you take bookings online. So we manage a lot of data on sports and fitness events, things like that. Great, thank you. Um, Fibodo, I'm not sure what your name is. Hmm. Hi, Anthony. Can you hear me? Can you hear us? We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear. So we have uh, five. Uh, it's called. Um, and find the book too. Uh, we've created a, an online diary with uh, a merchant behind the scenes, which allows any host or anybody that sells, sells time um, to do that online. So we do it through customizable apps, uh, web pages, that type of thing. Um, I think uniquely as well, we allow uh, that data to be shared through uh, different portals and a lot of affiliate partners. And we provide a widget into corporates so that staff can find the book and do it. Great, thank you. Um, Ed? Hi, I'm Ed Clements from Booking Book, um, a, book a booking platform. It's sim uh, similar, it sounds, to the last two. So we do already have an uh, API, but it'll be interesting to, to see how you know, we, can, we can do something that works more for, for aggregators working in, in sports. Great, thank you. Uh, Don? Uh, hello, um, I'm Don from I'm in, and uh, work with Oliver and Ben who are also on this call. Um, I'm in is uh, we aggregate, um, I know uh, Matt talks about aggregation, so we just we use open opportunity data and we able to provide it uh, to different apps and websites um, that for allowing users to more easily find uh, opportunities. 
uh, really here representing the I mean, team as a whole. There were a couple of technical personnel who wouldn't have been here today, but um, due to work constraints, I haven't been able to make it. So I'm really representing. Uh, I'm in this really feeling feel for how this uh, new community group is taking shape and the exciting things that can be achieved. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, ben? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there. So I'm Ben, I work at I'm in as well. Um, and I work primarily on something called open sessions, which allows clubs to um, get their sessions found online in places like Get Active. Um, get Active is a, another product I'm working on, and that allows um, so far people in London um, the opportunity to search for um, sessions run by the clubs they can do in their area. Great, thank you. And Andy? Me? I hope you can hear me. Um, it's Andy Devon. We're a county sports partnership for, um, so our interest is slightly different in as much as we're focused very much on uh, working with community and partners at all levels, including major providers and independent um, commercial providers providing activity. But we're focused particularly on development and helping um, particularly people who are inactive or um, underrepresented a part. So in the context of today's discussion, our main interest is in um, systems we might have to help guide somebody to actually find your available to them very locally um, and that with informal small group type activities running well as um, leisure provider sessions. Okay, thank you Andy. Um, let's see if I have not hit yet. Uh, Nick? Hello there. Uh, so Nick Evans, um, been working over the last couple of years on um, open data um, and now working with um, the Open Data Institute and um, also um, still with IMIN, uh, although they are two separate and distinct jobs that I have. Uh, and today I will be representing myself. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Nick. Um, Russ, did you want to have another chance for introduction to see if your mic is working? No. Uh, okay. Um, Russ has put an uh, introduction in the, the comments. Um, right. I'm going to, I think I've hit everybody. Um, so I'm going to uh, uh, press on uh, with the agenda. It's really interesting to see what a uh, mix of uh, backgrounds and organizations we've got here, uh, which is great um, because we want as many uh, people in the sector uh, to contribute to this process as possible. Um, so what I wanted to kind of do is, is because we're really kind of starting out as a community group, I wanted to uh, quickly go around and uh, review the kind of scope of what we're trying to achieve here um, and to look at some of our working practices. Um, I've shared a few um, emails with the, the mailing list already, which some of you may have seen, um, and there is a blog post that I've written that kind of introduces the group um, on the community group blog, um, but I'll just recap uh, some of that for those that you've joined recently and might not have had a chance to catch up. Um, so, um, what? So, we are part of a uh, kind of larger project um, that uh, yeah, I is uh, running in partnership with uh, Sport England. Um, and the, you know, the wider goal here is to help get more people more active. Uh, make them more aware of uh, opportunities to take part in physical activities in that area. Um, and the plan to do that is to make uh, more open data available about those activities, about those opportunities uh, to encourage and enable people to, to get involved. Um, in order to be able to share that data, then it was uh, a way for it to be um, uh, published uh, 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 described in standard ways to make it easy um, for applications to um, uh, to aggregate it, um, uh, drive discovery tools, 
uh, a whole range of uh, innovative applications. Um, but what we're what we're focusing very much on is our, on opportunity data. There are lots of different types of data, as I'm sure you all know, that are relevant to the sector as a whole. Um, so there's uh, personal data about the participants, um, the statistics on participation in in uh, previous events. But those are those types of data are out of scope for this project. We're focusing purely on opportunity data. So what events and, and activities are happening in the local area, where are they taking place, um, how are they described. So I, I, I focus here is purely on, on uh, opportunities. Um, uh, any comment on that kind of scoping? Uh, I'm going to make regular pause so I don't end up lecturing at you and make sure everyone has a chance to, to comment. Okay. Um, if there's no other question at this point, then I'll, I'll kind of I'll press on. Um, so the, the the reason that we're doing this um, within the scope of the uh, W3C um, is that we're uh, very keen to make this uh, an open process. So we want the um, any work on uh, standards and specifications to happen in the open to be uh, uh, so there's opportunities for anyone in the sector with uh, technical domain expertise to get involved uh, in these discussions and help shape up these standards so that they work for everyone. Um, the W3C provides um, uh, infrastructure to make that happen, uh, which covers everything from uh, kind of mailing lists, um, a means to uh, publish reports, but also um, uh, kind of, uh, contributor licensing agreements that kind of clarify that uh, everything that we do within the group um, will be uh, openly published for people to work on. Um, so it seems a very good place to kind of uh, house, uh, house the activities of the group. Um, one of the things that the W3C uh, ask all of their community groups to do is to think about what their charter is, so um, what the scope of the group is, what its deliverables will be, and um, how the group will work in the open. Um, so they want to be able to see some evidence that, that, that um, that is actually happening um, and want to be able to uh, have an audit trail so that uh, anyone who wants to follow along in the, in the development of the standards can kind of catch up uh, with previous decisions uh, but also be able to participate. Um, they provide a draft uh, uh, charter template um, which I've um, uh, extended to kind of focus it on our activities. Um, I'm going to share the link again here in the in the group. Um, I've circulated this. I don't know whether anyone's had a chance to to look at it, um, but it'd be useful if we could uh, uh, talk about a couple of elements of it here on the call just to see if anyone has any immediate feedback. Um, just at a high level, um, what the what the charter is intended to do is to uh, introduce the goals of the group, um, the scope of the activities. Um, so as you can see from the document, what what I've uh, described there is a, is a focus very much on um, opportunity data, uh, means of structuring, publishing, and sharing that type of data. Um, and they also ask that uh, the group kind of tries to set out what its outputs will be, so what its specifications and reports and other uh, tools or test suites um, that are likely to be on its roadmap. So I've put some initial um, initial thoughts in there based on uh, some of the groundwork and planning that we've done uh, with the project so far. Um, uh, and then there's quite a lot of detail on um, how the group will uh, make decisions, how we'll uh, work, uh, work together. Um, and I can, I can summarize that very, um, very quickly. Um, the plan is that we will use the, the mailing list as a general point of coordination uh, and for general discussions. Um, and then we will be uh, any uh, documents that we work on. Um, we'll be drafting and publishing um, in GitHub within the Open Active organisation. Um, and any issues, feedback, or comments on those individual documents will happen within um, the individual GitHub projects. So GitHub will be our kind of audit trail, and the mailing list is for general uh, general coordination. Um, so it will be a relatively light touch, um, but it just as long as everyone's clear, 
uh, and it's happy with that, then, then we can move forward. But any comments or questions on that so far? Anything I could clarify? Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was um, I just had a quick scan of the, the data. Um, the um, well, re um, references to sport and physical activity, but then um, it does tend to narrow down later in the, the spec. I think it needs to uh, maintain the sport and physical activity re references to make it clear to people that that could encompass things like uh, rambling and so on. Um, which actually, in the context of activating inactive people, are um, so I just want to feed that back um, and see if there are people who agree. Um, uh, yeah, well, I definitely agree. That, that's, that's a good point, and it's um, an oversight on my part. It's, it's, the focus is very much uh, on the broader physical activity rather than just sports. Um, so I will uh, make a note to get that improved. Um, are there any other kind of comments or questions from the group? Uh, I, I actually had a, a question uh, about um, about the uh, uh, just as a I think uh, something about Slack and the idea that we have a bit more of a kind of chat channel between us to talk about uh, things in between the calls. Um, I just wondered if that was something that would be useful, or, or even how many people here even use Slack. Is that something that um, would be interesting to people? Um, anyone want to chip in there? Uh, would people, would anyone find it useful to have a more regular kind of discussion forum, or um, you're happy with kind of mailing list and a kind of monthly meeting of this form? I'll speak Anthony from Fiber. I'm open to Slack. Very happy to participate in that. Okay, great. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, a few votes for Slack. Um, well, I think um, what we'll do is we'll, we'll share around details then of um, how to participate in that. Um, the, um, I, I, I think that's fine to have general discussions. Um, what, I, what I want to encourage though is that the kind of substantive uh, discussion on the technology um, and other kind of specifications. We do that in a more open environment. Um, Slack is great for just kind of general general chatter and coordination, but um, decision making needs to happen in the open, and, and Slack doesn't necessarily give a, a great forum for that. I, I guess. Um, hi, Tom from I'm in. Uh, I, I guess uh, my question would be, how does Slack fit in with GitHub? I know that the um, there's kind of a push uh, to have visibility on GitHub and everybody kind of collaborating and communicating on there. Can you just explain the difference between um, how Slack would be beneficial over that or if it, if it needs to replace it in a way? Uh, maybe I'll pick this one up. Um, so I, I guess Slack, uh, we, what we could probably do is, is, is have a Slack channel where it, it actually is open so that anyone can join it if you if you want to from the, from the website so it's using Gitter or something. Um, so it, it's open in the, in the sense of it being available to come and, and join and it's good for quick things like um, sharing things quickly or, or getting people together for a reason or I don't know, um, particular qu random questions that might come up. Um, uh, you could have things that from from that are uh, happening on Git, be notified into that Slack channel. That might help people managing um, various channels and forms of communication, bringing it all into one place, for example. Um, so they could work together. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just looking at the comments uh, in the in the chat. Um, seems a lot of people are happy to at least try out Slack. So um, let's try that. Um, we'll circulate some uh, some joining details and see how it works. Um, but I'm also noting the, the comments about discourse, um, which we can look at as well. Okay, so um, so the other thing about the, the charter um, uh, and the kind of roadmap. Um, 
so which I kind of wanted to highlight today, and I either collect some comments from you now um, or uh, on the mailing list uh, afterwards. Um, but uh, given the focus on uh, opportunity data, um, there are a few things that I think are uh, worth uh, exploring in more detail there. Um, so um, there's been some existing work um, uh, that uh, Nick has uh, coordinated um, around the, um, the real-time uh, page data exchange spec, which um, if you haven't looked at it, um, uh, we can share a link to uh, Nick, if you could put a link in the, the chat whilst I'm talking, um, uh, which provides a means to harvest uh, data um, uh, as a kind of page JSON document. Um, but what it doesn't say is really anything about how that uh, data should be structured. Um, it kind of essentially exchange packets of, of JSON. So uh, a number of you, I think, are already starting to publish and share your data using that specification. Um, but what I'd like to do as part of, part of the first work of this group is to um, focus on how we actually describe opportunities. So how we describe the events, um, how we categorize events, um, and describe the, the kind of facilities or locations in which they take place. Um, that to me seems like um, a, a kind of obvious uh, first step. Some uh, existing work which um, Ali can talk about in a, in a few minutes um, that I think we can build on in that area. Um, but that feels like a, a, something early on that we should try and, and tick off on the roadmap uh, before getting on into any um, additional kind of technical work. Um, the other um, the, the other kind of component to that, which I should mention briefly, which is how people describe these opportunities. So there are various uh, lists of activities um, and different kind of categorization schemes that, are, that I think are in use in systems in the industry. Um, and it would be good to be able to uh, uh, publish and share those more widely and perhaps ultimately look at starting to uh, standardize some of the, the terms that people are using. Um, but the first step would be to uh, have ways to share those lists. So that also feels like something that I think would be worth us spending some time on uh, early on. Um, so that, that's why I'm proposing that we should kind of focus our attention at the beginning, which is how to, how to share activity lists and how to describe activities. So what the data model is and the key, um, the key attributes. Um, anybody have any thoughts to share on that initially? Uh, sorry, Liam, Nick here. I don't know if you saw that link. I tried to paste it in, but I don't know if I can do that from my phone. So I could, I don't know if I, if I um, successfully just pasted that link to build standard in or not. Yeah, okay. That's good. Yeah. Hi, Lee. Um, just one comment. Standard for the active Devon again. Um, just one thought, which I think, uh, as you described, is an excellent place to start. But um, the, uh, again, the view of people who are very focused on reaching people who aren't yet connected with active um, and maybe um, not clear themselves about what activity or what they're looking at. Um, there's some behavior change if you choose those, the terminology uh, to be obvious about what the activity is and the level on. Um, so um, again, in fact, Sport England um, would be in terms of advising on that kind of aspect. But um, fundamentally, we need to just start sharing this. Yeah, get the... Yes, okay, thank you. Yeah, we've, um, we've been talking to Sport England about um, both their work around behavior change and um, activity lists. And I'm, I'm hoping to get um, some just examples, even if there's any extracts of lists for the group to look at. Um, uh, by next week, so that um, we can see sort of compare between the different approaches. Um, so um, it would be useful. I we don't necessarily have to uh, kind of go through it line by line now, but it'd be useful if you could um, all take a look through that the deliverable section in the charter um, and see if you have any um, uh, additional thoughts um, or if you're happy with that. Um, 
uh, that kind of broad roadmap. Um, there are certainly other things that I think that we could um, uh, get to uh, within the group. So one of the things that has come up a few times is um, uh, booking of opportunities. Um, but I feel like we kind of need to get some of the groundwork in place around describing uh, opportunities first before moving on to um, some more technical work in that area. Um, so unless there's uh, any comments or feedback here, then I'm going to ask um, uh, Sally to have a background on some of the work that uh, the OBI has been doing so far. Sally, you have to pick up here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so as Lee has said, what we really want to do is we want to be able to work in the open, so we want to be able to just put things out there um, reasonably soon, um, just to kind of show you the things that we're thinking about more than anything. And we'd really like if you could contribute in a similar way as well. So um, obviously this group is going to be a really important part of that in terms of having a channel. Um, we've talked about different methods that that might be able to occur. So I think it's going to be a mix of us sort of asking for things every now and again. And hopefully you'll want to share um, some of the work that you're doing as well. So we'll try and structure that in a useful way. Um, but just to talk you through, we have posted a couple of things so far to the list, which were quite early on, actually. So um, the first was really my starting point in terms of um, getting involved with these standards. So uh, the first document is something that we're treating as a little bit of a living document, hopefully. Um, I imagine that certain sections of it will probably splinter off into their own um, outputs, but um, it's Basically, um, it's linked to from the, the site itself. So again, we can paste in um, some links for people to go to directly. Um, but it's very high level intentionally. Um, we did start off by going down a much more kind of technical and really dialed it back because I think that we need to get to that point naturally rather than um, diving into the nitty gritty too fast. Um, and there are certain key areas that Lee's kind of alluded to a little bit, but just to specifically call out we were looking at the landscape in terms of um, transport mechanisms, um, the structure and the values specifically, um, what people are doing at the moment, what the difficulties are, what the opportunities are, uh, what people's needs are. And as you can imagine, this is a very, very, uh, thank you, Lee. Um, it's a very diverse landscape in terms of the different people involved. And that's why we're hoping that groups like this can actually help us to shed some light on the different challenges. So. Uh, I'm not going to go through it all now. Um, some of it is, as I say, very high level in terms of um, we need to make sure that um, people who have different levels of experience are comfortable with the way that we're talking. And I think that's a really important point um, because, you know, we, we have such a, a diverse group involved now. Um, we want to think in terms of the reality of the situation. So there's a section uh, around youth cases, which I'm actually extending next week. Um, we're going to be speaking, as I said, to um, some behavioural change people. Um, but if you have any specific use cases you think would be relevant, if you've got any examples, um, I think Lee's starting to um, do some work on the data model and, and stuff like that. And it'd be really useful to have not only real examples to be able to inform what we think should uh, things should be, uh, but also to use as test cases as well for the future. Um, so there's also, on that point, there's a survey that we've created to capture some thoughts around this area. So um, if you want to submit anything through that, that'd be wonderful. Um, and then finally, um, we put together a spreadsheet of some initial scenarios um, just based on some existing data sets that we found. But again, this is quite limited in scope at the moment. But if you think there's anything notable in terms of the data that you deal with or um, the data that you might be sort of using at the moment. Um, just to give you an example, things that have come up have been stuff like how um, cycling, for instance, might have an event start time and uh, a finish time, but actually it might have separate uh, attributes in terms of the actual cycling duration and, and the timings for that would be distinct from the overall event. So um, that might be different to say um, a swimming session, which would have a very defined start and end time. So I think what we're trying to do is kind of chuck it all up, throw it out there and uh, basically sort of see 
you know, the the huge variety that we're dealing with and then and trying to refine this a little bit. So, uh, yes, just to close and reiterate that everything is welcome. Uh, we will share as much as we possibly can uh, without obviously boring you or overburdening you. Um, and we'd really encourage you to do the same. Great. Thank you, Sally. Um, does anybody have any uh, comments or uh, thoughts on um, what Sally's just reviewed? Either add up or drop a message in chat. Um, one of the things that, as Sally just mentioned at the end, uh, uh, what we don't want to do is end up just kind of bombarding you with a whole bunch of documents that we're just kind of busy writing at the ODI. Uh, I want to get into the get, get to a point where we're kind of collaboratively altering some of these documents. Um, but also, I want to make sure, sure that we are asking for feedback in the right way. So we have been sharing things with the group um, just on uh, by the mailing list. Um, as Google Docs so that you can add comments. Um, but if you would prefer to do, for example, structured walkthroughs as a group to collect comments, uh, then I'm happy to do that as well. Um, I know different people have, you know, prefer engaging in different ways. Um, so if, if people prefer to uh, provide feedback, uh, you know, more, through a more discussion form, then we can do that. Um, just, just let me know now or you can follow up on the email. Okay. Um, so, uh, moving on then, I think that's kind of the, the kind of main kind of introductory stuff that we wanted to cover for this first call. Um, I'm wondering whether there's any, any of you want to share any more information about um, projects that you're working on? Um, uh, Mike, maybe there's a, uh, uh, a few things that you might want to share about your work, if there's any pointers that, uh, to things that you're working on that the, the group could look at. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll post something to the mailing list. Um, a lot of this has been done with Paul Davidson uh, of the Local Government Standards Body, and we have, uh, he has a data model, um, uh, and then we have different views on that. So we have a, a CSV schema for simplified data for it and a more a richer model that he's he's defined which can be expressed in various languages and i think it's probably worth this group considering each of the properties of that model and whether or not they're they're required for sporting opportunities so things like eligibility opportunity timings cost contact details a whole host of these things that um it's quite well documented um, and Paul's also reviewed what he calls service directories, um, which are out there in use primarily by local government at the moment and spoken to people that are pushing out, you know, large volumes of service data, which may be relevant. I'm still not absolutely clear as to how different sports data is or whether it's just a subset of that. But I think if I share these documents, it will soon become apparent how relevant they are or not relevant. Yeah. That'd be great, Mike, if you could share that to the list. Um, so the, the other area um, where there's some existing work that we could, we could draw on is um, just around general event description. Um, there's a lot of activity in the uh, schema.org um, community groups for describing marking up events, um, sharing online. Um, so that's another area that um, we probably want to look for alignment um, because uh, some of the physical activity events start to blur into more general forms of kind of participation. Um, so I think there's, uh, there's definitely some learning uh, that we can take from that. Can I? Um, oh. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't got a chat on here, so I can't see when it's uh, getting a queue, as it were. Um, so uh, just a, a couple of questions, uh, I suppose, just uh, uh, from me on this is, yeah, I, I mean, there's, there's a few people here who, who are kind of obviously they've built, built their own systems, have already got their own APIs. How does this, in terms of time scales and in terms of what we're looking to achieve here, um, what, when can we see tangible outputs that will affect the various products that people are building? 
Okay, um, so I certainly have a, a time frame in, in mind in order to move forward with the, the kind of activity description side of things. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we can get, start to get some agreements um, uh, around that sort of early next year, um, so sort of January time. I've got a, uh, a draft document that I'm putting together um, for the group to, to start to rip apart, which I want to share next week. Um, from discussions and work that we've we've uh, done today, it seems that there's already some, some quite broad alignment between how people are describing opportunities, um, and it, so it feels like there's just some low-hanging fruit in terms of defining some of the, the the standard model for that data and just agreeing on names of fields, that kind of thing, which uh, should be fairly light touch in terms of um, specifying kind of formats for exchanging the data. Uh, does that help address the question, Nick? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 that's really great. Um, and, and I suppose I was thinking in, in terms of the um, what's it for me, for someone in the group here, like why, as apart from obviously moving the sector forward, which we'll be doing by creating the standards, what, you know, what's the what 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 the main benefits that we're I suppose we're expecting to see from implementing standards as a booking system or implementing standards or consuming data? You know, what, I mean, is, is it worth us just just covering that or? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I have a view, but I'd be interested in views from the group as well. Um, Might be quite a good exercise, yeah, good idea. Um, Andy, you mentioned this was something that, uh, that you were kind of interested in and, and like the benefits of wider exchanging of data. Is, is there some uh, goals that you have in mind? Uh, yeah, very definitely. Um, uh, for Al, um, the huge difficulty is actually um, we're, we're, we're operating closer with Devon, for example, and there's lots of evidence about people need to find activities that are very, very local to them. So um, uh, that's actually quite hard to observe when you're working with a sort of wide variety of, of very groups often. Um, so having a standard that makes uh, information shareable is absolutely key to that. That. And the, on the other side of that, we're extremely interested in working more with um, people like GP, Access Prime Care, um, uh, other health spaces um, in terms of their activity. Um, uh, they need, uh, um, we need to be able to provide a means that are easily discoverable um, for the people to offer stuff too. Um, there's also a uh, hanging fruit. Um, I, uh, I don't know whether we need any uh, contact or discussion with Walking for Health. Um, Walking for Health is a national uh, um, with a, 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 a sort of infrastructure team in London, I think. Um, uh, they operate um, uh, a fairly um, regulated form of, of walking opportunity. There's a real, fair degree of standardization already in terms of structure of that, um, and they have a substantial behind it. Um, it's far, far, far from perfect. It could provide a very um, interesting opportunity to actually test some of the things the, we're interested in against um, uh, very early on. And be probably a quite important partner. Whatever uh, we do doesn't get adopted by the likes of all, we'll be doing something wrong. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Uh, I know Nick's doing uh, some, some work around engagement. I don't know whether Nick, they're already on your list or whether you spoke to them already, but I think we're very keen to get them involved. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely. I've already, already spoken to them uh, and they're very keen. So, that, that, yeah, fully agree. It's great. Great. So, so going back to Nick's question then, um, for those of you that are building uh, booking systems, a few of you mentioned that you're, you're implementing APIs already, uh, where do you see uh, the benefits in um, uh, standard exchange of this data? Someone want to offer a, a thoughts? I can jump in here. Um, sure. What we've experienced, so basically our, what we've kind of done over the past three, four months basically is have to obviously not only go around and find all 
all the digital providers, obviously there's some who use as say things like MindBody, they're easy to find for us. Um, there's a lot of people who don't. Now, there's kind of there's a, there's a few bits of work here. One of which is there's like a huge range of these people, right? So some have their own booking systems already, and there's obviously lots of different ones of those in play. Um, if those are using some kind of standardization would obviously be very useful. Then there's obviously the higher layer whereby, you know, we have all the way up to things like MindBody, and then all, even bigger systems than that. Everyone's using different data. Now there's obviously lots of client-side fitness sports booking platforms. Um, and at the moment, obviously, well, historically, everyone has to go and do all this this same work, getting these all together. Now, obviously, the problem I think is that on the clients from, this, from the range of the tiny clients, you know, the people who run one thing a week or whatever it may be, or just want to make a bit of extra cash all the way up to big gyms, their requirements for actually kind of how the payment systems should work, I expect is going to be hugely different. Um, and kind of, it's going to be hard not to overcomplicate it, I think, for the small people who just want to, you know, sell a tennis match, tennis training session, whatever it may be compared to the gyms who obviously want to sell hundreds of things a week, different prices, potential memberships, potential just pay as you go. Um, and kind of that, that scope is going to be quite hard to break down. So I'm not sure how best to attack that. Does that make sense? Can I, can I put in there? Who, who was that was talking then, sorry? That's Matt. Hello. Hi, Matt. Um, this is Anthony from Barbadoo. We have already all of that in place. So I'm, you know, I'm sort of... Uh, I have a slight hesitation about sort of you know sharing everything that we're up to and everything that we're doing, but it's taken us about three years, but we have something in place that's the sort of once per week class and up to a um, you know, fully integrated um, sort of local authority club type of thing. So you know it depends on. Um, I'm more than happy to share that. I guess. Yeah, well, I guess I guess the the key would be obviously okay, depending on what you're willing to share, but. We kind of there's lots of people currently sitting on as as you have as well you know you have a client side platform where you want people to be able to discover these activities and that's supported by currently everyone's custom system to go and aggregate huge amounts of data um so we've got the repetition here right yeah i guess so we can't uh we don't think at the moment the the, the data is um as uh, detailed enough for us to take it and then to sell it um so that's where where we sit at the moment is that if, you know the data standards are agreed and you know data's there then we'd be sort of desperate or first in mind to see the data. Um, but I looked through the Excel that's just been put out and you know, we have all that and we have got another ten or twelve fields on top of that. So I guess that um, yeah I, I guess that the, the, the key comes down is that, is that if it's our customer we want to do the and I know that somebody mentioned before not going into this but we want to do the transaction on our site. And there's none of the reasons for that is that we don't just have a consumer engagement front end. We actually um, supply search widgets, whatever it may be, to corporates, to affiliates, um, but also uh, that make searches in our databases. So the issue is it's not, it's not always our customer. So we have to make the transaction of the customer in our system. So I can't, I can't make any data and then feed it into a different system where the consumer is then based with another uh, a variety of uh, another way to pay. Sure, and I think herein lies the fundamental problem, right? Which is, you know, you 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 know, won't be the only one in, in that position whereby you have oh, customers, sure. you know, supply side people that are tightly coupled with your system. You exactly. know, as, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. As you know, everyone from studio management systems to you know big gym chains who manage multiple studios, gyms around you know, the, the UK, whatever. Um, yeah, I, I guess this, this is kind of, for us at least, this is the, the critical thing is, is it even possible for us all to, you know, somehow standardize this or work together to get this data digitized or in the right format when we also need, you know, need it in our very customized systems, which, as you say, probably have to handle the transactions ourselves, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I guess commercially, that's what we're all looking at is, is who handles the transaction. Yeah, so agree, yeah. just to jump in really quickly, uh, we did think that this was going to come up. <laughs> uh, just to reiterate that what we're trying to do here is put in place some fundamental foundations. So we want to make sure that the absolute core things which don't exist and I think are kind of almost taken as a little bit of a given. So things like the, um, you know, the values for activity terminology, the structure of what it should be. We want to get that right before we do too much and sort of start to move on to talking about how we could um, improve booking. 
So at the moment, um, whilst we absolutely understand that that is a, a hugely critical part of it, and it's something that I know that you've all got, um, especially you know those who work in the space have some um, sensitivities around and, and offer lots of thoughts on. Um, that's not the focus at this point in time. Um, just a couple of other things to mention as well. Uh, we sort of talked a little bit about the head and the body and the tail, and I'm not sure if people are too familiar with that terminology. Um, the others can sort of give you a little bit more detail perhaps around um, some of the things we've been looking at. Um, but at this point, again, prior to sort of moving into next year, we're very much focusing um, on the, the larger aspects. So starting at the head and working towards the tail is how we're focusing it. Um, so it's it's very much kind of going out after those people who can make a big impact rather than starting with the behavioural uh, behavioral change, starting with the, you know, trying to help the, the paper-based village tennis courts actually get online and all of that. Um, although we understand that obviously that is a market that ties into the services that some of um, you are actually providing at the moment. Great. Um, thank you, Sally. Um, I'm uh, mindful of the time, so I want to try and wrap this up uh, uh, by four o'clock. Um, uh, is, is there anything uh, else that anyone wants to kind of briefly bring up at the end? Um, uh, please, please uh, leave just quickly drop a comment in. Um, uh, if not, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of wrap things up. Um, so what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to uh, share a summary of the call uh, back to the main list, share some of the links that we've got here in the chat, um, things that we're looking for feedback on. Um, and I also will be uh, scheduling a doodle poll for our next call, um, uh, which will be in January. Um, uh, and then perhaps we can get into a kind of regular schedule from then on. Um, and again, I'll ask any of you if, you, if, there's, if there's work that you're happy to share um, with the group, uh, whether that's data formats, examples of data or schemas uh, or APIs, then please go ahead and share it. I think, I think the more input we get, um, the, the better. Um, uh, then the other, I say the other thing that we'd ask is just to uh, give, give feedback on those documents that uh, Sally has shared, um, uh, particularly on the, the the activity use cases. I think um, uh, because uh, uh, if we're kind of wide of the mark on what people are, are capturing in, in their database at the minute, uh, and it's not commercially sensitive, then it would be great to get those uh, get those details captured. Um, so uh, I'm not seeing any other questions or points. Um, so uh, I'm going to wrap things up. Uh, and, and can I raise one point? Yeah, sure. You know, if I look at the list here, I think fundamentally, uh, I forget who's doing the booking, but booking is the is going to be fundamentally what what makes anything succeed or not, because the consumer is driving this. The consumer says, you know, I want a cab. He books a, you know, a box of the availability of the Uber, and he, and he jumps in it, and that's fine. He's away. So when I look at the the data that you're collecting here for, you know, uh, coach session for girls and the football and things like that, you know, my question is, with the uh, with the restrictions on you know children being online and things like that, it it's a fundamental. It's got to be a fundamental thing about, about what's being done. It's how do these people actually get booked in, into something? Because the consumer they can't go somewhere and find something and actually get what they want. Then when then we're sort of missing the point of creating more registration sites. So the booking is, is the, the ability for somebody to say, that's it, I'm in, is uh, it surely has to be the, the key. Yeah, I, well, I think there's, uh, yeah, so I take your point there about the, um, the, the kind of transaction flow and, and what's the... But even if it's free, even if it's free, so the customer must be must be able to say, "I want three o'clock on Thursday. I'm in. You know, I'm, I'm booking that." Um, I don't use the other brand. I keep using yeah. that brand of I'm in. <laughs> but um, you know, if they if somebody wants to make that decision to 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 book in, to join us, to say I'm in, whatever they want to do, fundamentally, that you know that needs to be catered for. If there's a booking or somewhere, or if it's an underage person, whatever it may be, fundamentally, that. That is what the consumer is going to require if they get a real-time result. If I may, I think the thing we find it very easy to miss about fitness 
as opposed to what I'm going to do. But generally, people don't. They want to do the activity for a period of time, and then the motivation is nowhere near as strong as to go watch the football or go do some other activity which is particularly booked. And I think that's what you think about. You know, people will go a long way to book something yeah. that is and not going to, as my last experience, they're not going to quite as far down the line to book something they're not really sure what they do want to go to. So I think that's the experience that some of us, so many of us have on the front end of actually dealing with it, and that's why it's so important that, yeah, it doesn't have to be the, the paid part, the money part, of the transaction, but, you know, actually fundamentally, it's not very complicated. It's what it is, what time it is, where it is, and who's running it um, is the most important thing. And then, you know, after that, it's, can I actually book it? Because you look, I mean, you know, I've never seen a bigger website than the BBC with more potential and a seemingly less engagement than BBC to get inspired stuff at the moment. I mean, every single advert break that has a, you know, a mention of it, and yet, I mean, I don't know anyone who's done anything through BBC to get inspired. And it's because when you go there, at the end, there's a number to some bloke who you ring and he doesn't answer. Um, so I, I do understand where the process is going from open access and, and uh, you know, we have to do that thing first. I just think we need to do that relatively quickly and work on the big problem because we could spend six months working on which fields we have to do data and then get this problem at the end and we might as well all not bother to be honest. We need to come to some kind of agreement in theory about how how booking, um, whether it's free or on a transaction, could possibly work. So I think if that doesn't work, we might as well, if I'm frank, not bother. Agree. Yes. Okay. I mean, uh, that, okay, that's that, that's a useful point, and uh, but that, this is exactly why I wanted to try and move forward uh, with some of this kind of uh, basic stuff as quickly as possible. And I think mm -hmm. because there are uh, lots of, there are, there's lots of existing work around kind of event description, we shouldn't need to have a massive debate about what to call some of these fields and how to structure things. But um, uh, and then we can get into some of the the kind of bigger bigger issues. Um, but I, I couldn't, can't can't just we can't just plow ahead with that without having done some due diligence and had review of it as a uh, you know, community group and get everybody on board with it. Yeah, sure, I'll just try that. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, it's four o'clock, so I, I do want to try and keep us to time. Um, so again, thank you all for making time in your schedules this afternoon. Um, uh, comments and feedback on, on the documents uh, and whether you felt the, uh, the call has been useful or not uh, would be very welcome. So. Uh, please uh, either send comments to the list or, or directly to myself. So um, thanks again, and I'll hopefully see you all again in January. So, okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys.